Greetings and welcome to this next installment for beam analysis and design. For this part of the problem, we need to calculate the maximum shear stress in the cross section that was given here and that is undergoing the loading involved here. Now, if you'll notice, we have our maximum shearing force here and we have calculated our area moment of inertia here. So for shear stress, what we want to do is employ the equation maximum shear stress equals VQ over IT. Now this is the general shear formula. There are other formulas that we use for example, W shapes or S shapes that are steel. And there are some other special formulas for rectangles and circles and so on. But because this is a built up shape, it's not a standard, it's not special. Uh, it needs to have an analysis done by the general shear formula. The general shear formula is a little bit complicated. But once you have most of this down, like I said, we already have V and I. Uh, T is merely the thickness um, at your point of interest. Now, the point of interest is dependent on where you want to get your shear stress. So in this case, the maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis right here, uh, the XX centroidal axis. So uh, that makes it easy. The thickness is right there. It's five millimeters. So we have V, T, I, and T all set. The next question really is Q. What is Q? Well, we create a sketch of the cross section here that is above or below the centroidal axis, whichever one is easier. Since they're both T's in this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just sketch one out here. Okay, so we have this cross section. Okay, this is a width of 40 millimeters. These are 5 millimeters. And the distance from top to here, where our centroidal axis is, is that 60 millimeters top to bottom minus the C of 35 millimeters. So that makes us 25 millimeters top to bottom. Subtract this 5 millimeters and we get 20 millimeters. Okay, so we have all of our dimensions that we need. All we need to do is using our centroidal axis or our axis of interest, depending on if we have a different axis of interest, and find the centroid of the shape. In fact, we don't even need to go as far as to find the centroid of the shape. Just take one step back from there. I'm going to set up our spreadsheet element number one and number two and if I call this one element number one and this one element number two and I need their area formulas which will be BH and B millimeters H millimeters area millimeters squared and then we need a little y bar millimeters. Then we have A times little y bar and that's in millimeters cubed. And let's see if we can go stretch out a bit. And maybe we'll see this a little better. There we go. 
So for element one, our formula is BH, our B, our base, again, that's the length that's, uh, that is parallel to the axis that we are interested in. And so that's 40 millimeters. The height is five millimeters. Area equals this times this. And our Y bar. This might be the toughest part, but it's not that hard. Just going from this axis, we go up 20 and then another two and a half millimeters. So it's equal to the height of this one, number two, plus its own height divided by two, so half of its own height. Now we'll fill this in in a second. So base times height, base is five millimeters and its height is 20 millimeters. Aha, so that programming kicked in there and I just need to drag that down. Now don't do the drag down thing here. This has its own thing, which is equal to its own base divided by two. Could we have uh, set some of the stuff up uh, connecting up with this spreadsheet? Probably, but uh, we'll just do this independently this time. And a y bar is this area times y bar. Same thing here. And now we just add them up. Okay, so again, we just found the base and the height of each one. We found the area of each one. The Y bar is a little bit trickier because you have to make sure you include the height of the one. But it's always with respect to this axis that we're cutting it above here from the very bottom there. And oh dear, I did do this wrong. Okay, so this should not be two and a half. Uh, this should be half of the height, not half of the base. Okay, so I caught my own mistake there. That's fine. Okay, good thing to go back and check. Always do that. And now we have 4,500 for this AY bar. All we did was multiply the area times the Y bar. And then this area times this Y bar gives us 1,000 millimeters cubed. And our sum AY bar is that. And that is Q. So our Q is 5,500 cubic millimeters. So I'm just going to put this into a formula here. So our shear stress is V equals V, where it is right there, times Q. divided by, open parentheses, I, which is over here, times the thickness, which is this thickness right here. So I'll go back there. And our thickness of element two is its base right there. And now we are at 6.00414, and it still begs the question, 6.00 what? So we'll do our unit analysis here, and V is in Newtons. Q here is in millimeters cubed. I is in millimeters to the fourth, and T is in just millimeters. So again, we end up with, okay, we got three millimeters up top here. So I'm going to cross all those out, cross this one out, and I've got two more I got to get rid of. So four minus two is two. We end up again with Newton per square millimeter which is a megapascal. So if you remember from some of the previous videos, I said keep things in the millimeters, and this is why. We don't have to mess around. We can do a lot of cancellations, 
and uh, we end up with newtons per square millimeter and it saves you a lot of trouble to remember that that's a megapascal. So our maximum shear stress is 6.00 megapascals and that's assumed to be at the neutral axis here. Well I hope this helped. I hope you learned a little bit about finding the maximum shear stress using the general shear formula. Even though there are other ones that are easier for different shapes, this is not one of those shapes. But all we had to do was break this shape up into elements, find the uh, area, the y bar of each element, and the a y bar of each element, and simply add them up, and that's Q. The area moment of inertia we found previously, the shear force we found previously, the thickness is the thickness right in this level here uh, where this shape overlaps the neutral axis. So it's just this five millimeters here. And then we were able to put it all together and look at our units, making sure we ended up with something that was stress and that made a whole lot of sense. Our answer to our maximum shear stress ends up to be 6.00 megapascals. I hope this video helped and I look forward to moving on with you to work on the deflections of this beam setup.